Welcome, everybody. Please be seated. Welcome to the regular meeting of council for Monday, January 9th, uh, 2017. The first city council meeting of 2017. And so, Happy New Year, everyone. I'd like to uh, call this meeting to order and uh, approve the agenda. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize that we are on the traditional territories of the Hoopachesset and the Sashot First Nation. Uh, councilors, are there any late items? And City Clerk, any late items? Uh, thank you. Um, before we begin our meeting tonight, I would like to take a moment to inform the public of some of our upcoming budget meetings. Based on Council's budget direction at the November 14th meeting, the Chief Administrative Officer will be presenting a draft 2017 to 2021 financial plan at a special meeting of Council on Wednesday, February the 1st at 6 p.m. here in Council Chambers. The following week, on Wednesday, February the 8th at 6 p.m. in Council Chambers, a further special budget meeting will be held for council and senior staff to discuss the draft budget in detail. A public e-town hall, e hall budget meeting will be held on Wednesday, February the 15th at 6.30 p.m. in council chambers. This will provide community members with an opportunity to voice their opinions, suggest new ideas, and ask questions of council. Residents can participate in person or online by submitting questions through email, Facebook, or Twitter. Further information regarding this event will be publicized in the coming weeks. All of these meetings are open to the public and will be live streamed and archived on the city's website. For more information regarding these meetings, please visit the city's website or call City Hall at 250-723-2146. Uh, Council, uh, we need a motion to approve the agenda as circulated, uh, and there are no late items to be outlined. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. And, Council, we have minutes. Uh, special meetings held at 3 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. and regular council meeting held at 7 p.m. on December 12th, 2016. A motion to adopt those minutes would be in order? I'll make the motion, Mr. Mayor. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? <coughs> Carried. Thank you. And this is uh, the public input period. It's an opportunity for public to address council on topics of relevance to city council. A maximum of four speakers for no more than three minutes each will be accommodated. And seeing none, uh, yes, please come forward and uh, remember you have three minutes, sir. Okay, I'll try to be quick. And what we need is uh, your name and address. Yep. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Cameron Stefiak. Uh, I live in Polar Burnie, 4939 Athol Street. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for my time here, and I'll try to be quick as best as I can. So like I said, my name is Cameron Steffick. I'm 22 years old. I lived here my whole life. And I want to ask you a quick question. Does anybody here know John A. Macdonald? Of course you do, the father of Canada, first prime minister of Canada. So John A. Macdonald, he was a driving force for a lot of things. He uh, was the reason we had tariffs in Canada, making equal trade for versus Canadian uh, explorers, versus uh, Canadian uh, manufacturers versus American manufacturers. Uh, he also went on to um, sorry about this. He also went on to speak about uh, oh, he was the driving force behind the Canadian Pacific Railway. So this guy did a lot of good things. He's the father of Canada, and I'll try to be quick, so I only have three minutes. But also, he was an outspoken person for residential schools. Believe it or not, he was. He was uh, really against, just like A. W. Neal, against Chinese immigrants voting. But yet, it's how we choose to remember him. He's on our ten dollar bill. We don't change streets, we don't change names of schools. It's how we choose to remember somebody. 
How much longer society are we going to use the word reconcile to justify spending taxpayer dollars in the past? I have nothing to do with what A.W. Neal did. I have nothing to do with residential schools, neither did my parents before me. Nothing. If we're going to keep changing the past and going back, we're never going to move forward. I'm not trying to say what happened was wrong or was right. Residential schools was horrible. I learned about it in high school. Mr. Rattan, or you know, I went to school with you. You were my principal. It was a big part of our curriculum. We learned lots about it. But I don't think changing the name of streets and towns and schools is going to do anything to change the past. It happened. It's part of our past. I don't have much else to say other than that, but that's how I feel. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, Cameron. Does anybody else wishes to address council? Yeah. Yes, please come forward. Good evening, my name is Jan McKay and I reside at 2418 6th Avenue. And I just have a couple things on my mind. I know there was $250,000 that was supposed to go again to Canal Resort and I'm wondering whether that is going there. And I also was taking pictures of good old Mount Aerosmith in this beautiful weather that we had with the snow on. And I noticed the disrepair of the clock tower. And I've seen in the paper where, from council that you're speaking of maybe fixing it or maybe taking it down. I think it's a very unique place in our town. And more people come to Harbor Key than they do Canal Resort. So I'm just curious what you are doing to repair or keep that. I took pictures, and it hasn't been cleaned or that a lot of that area has a lot of moss on it for a couple of years. So if it's a prime area and we're putting money into it, look after it. But I notice that when things, you don't want to hang on to things, they kind of get run down. But I also think that we shouldn't be spending our money on changing names of streets. I think we're getting really politically correct is getting out of order. And it's tax dollars. I'm interested, how much of the tax dollar does the resident pay now according, and how much does the business? Because it's flipped, and more is getting on the taxpayer than the businesses. Is Catalyst, does, do they have another break this year? Does anybody can answer me? Uh, Catalyst is in its last year of, uh, of the freeze in their taxes. It was a decision. I thought they were asking for a little bit more or not. No, nope. they're, they're paying the same as they have been for the last number of years, and they're, this is the last year of the freeze. Um, okay, can I have an answer then to the 250 grand that you thought should perhaps go to Canal Beach? Is that going to Canal Beach, or is that uh, going to go for infrastructure? And may, maybe perhaps, seems how we have a winter like we did, maybe more snow removal will happen. Well, even though uh, that we don't normally do it this way, uh, uh, we haven't made a decision about 250000 for Canal Beach, so I'm not really sure what you're well, talking I about. Well, I saw that in the paper that one of the councils was saying that perhaps this $250,000 that was in a, uh, over. We, that we haven't made a decision about that as a council. Okay. And just out of curiosity, I guess I'll get this all off my chest, um, how... Are you going to be narrowing our streets anymore? Because if you notice, like, the snow plows can't get down the narrow streets that have been done. And if you want to take a good look at what went on, go along Fifth Avenue. It was done a few years ago. They nicely closed it in. Up above, the last block is still wide. But I think all over the province, people are trying to widen their streets. And we go along and narrow them. And the people that come in and do the curving wonder about why we do this, because other people are trying to widen the streets and we're narrowing ours. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address council? Right, uh, then moving on. Uh, there are no, no delegations this meeting. And uh, we're moving on to staff reports. Uh, 
Councillor Washington, or would you like to make a motion about accounts? Certainly, Mr. Mayor. I move that the certification of the Director of Finance dated January 9, 2017 be received in checks numbered 137490 to 137752 inclusive and payments of accounts totaling $1,057,971.42 be approved. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And uh, City Clerk, we have some information about a lease of property to Handy Andy Maintenance Limited. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, this is a renewal of a lease with Handy Andy. It's uh, for the portion of lane adjacent to their property at 4917 Bird Street, um, and it's um, utilized for access to their property. Okay, uh, Council, any questions? Then Councillor Paulson, would you like to make that motion? Cut me off guard here. Um, the Council for the City of Port Alberni authorized the Mayor and Clerk to enter into a lease agreement with Tina Smith of Handy Andy Maintenance Limited for the portion of lane adjacent to the property at 4917 Bird Street for a two-year period at a cost of $350 per year plus taxes effective January 1st, 2017. Seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. And City Clerk, we have a fire protection agreement for uh, Colson Manufacturing. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, this is, um, it's a, a new agreement. The original one we've had in place with Colson um, was established in 1994. So we've updated that agreement to reflect the current level of service provided. Um, and it's for fire suppression and medical first responder services for their mill site on Cese Road. Uh, questions, Council? Um, City Clerk, has there been an increase in the amount that we're charging to uh, Colson Manufacturing for this? Uh, Mr. Mayor, probably the CAO can answer this better than I can, but it's a formula base um, based on the, the buildings that they have on site. And I'm not entirely sure how the formula works, but the CAO certainly will. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, the uh, agreement um, that it is in front of you is really a refreshment of the existing, the previous agreement, and there's no change in the structure, the fee structure, so we don't anticipate any change up or down in the fee for service. Has there been any change in requirements in terms of what they have to make sure that they provide? Uh, not in this agreement, no. We've, we've updated the agreement and uh, it reflects um, more accurately the service we provide and it also reflects some of the improvements that have been made on that site since the previous agreement and those improvements have driven an increase in fee. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sove, would you like to make that motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, that the Council of the City of Port Alberni approved the agreement with Colson Manufacturing uh, Limited as presented for the provision of fire suppression and medical first responder services for the mill site on Sensi Road, and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign an agreement on behalf of the city. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And council, we're uh, looking at the current status report. Are there any questions, Council? Uh, uh, CAO? Mr. Mayor, um, I'll remind Council that on December 12th of last year, we had a special meeting where we went over the status report and uh, Council gave direction specific to each item uh, if you wanted to see it changed or made a higher or lower priority or deleted altogether. We have a couple of items that, that we did not get to that I was hoping we could address in this meeting. Okay, and the... It's the last three items, I believe, uh, that we didn't get a chance to? It'll be 29, 30, and 31. We've actually dealt with 32. And then there's six items at the end of it um, that came out of the Rogers report. If you like, Mr. Mayor, I can give you recommendations. That would be great. On, on 29, Mr. Mayor, um, I, we would recommend that there are two action items in there. And we would recommend that we split those out into two, two separate ones. One would be the sale of eggs and honey, and the other one would be to do with water consumption rates. Okay, thank you. Um, if you like, I can go through all of them, and then you can vote on them, or you can vote yeah. one at a time. Uh, I, would move that we, I would move that we concur with the uh, suggestion to, to divide it into uh, eggs and honey and a separate one for water consumption rates. Second. Okay, thank you. And 
Uh, on the motion, all those in favor? Carried, thank you. Mr. Mayor, number 30, uh, report you, regarding the use and potential regulations of drones within city boundaries. This has been on our list since 2015. It's not a, it doesn't align itself with our strategic plan. And I would, I would suggest that unless council has um, a, a new interest in this, that you consider deleting this item. Uh, okay. Is there, uh, what's the will of council? Councillor Sobey? Uh, I'm the one that brought, us, uh, brought this motion forward. I feel that it's still important. Uh, drones are getting more and more popular. Uh, I have concerns about, and there's been many complaints last summer about drone use around private residential area, especially at night. Uh, these drones carry uh, uh, cameras and uh, also the uh, newer version of drones that came out this Christmas uh, for the children and all that, uh, it's hard to, to have them control and I'm just worried about it falling mm -hmm. on pedestrians or actually in traffic. My main concern was the residential area. Uh, I think it'd be a good use to keep it in the park area like any other uh, recreation. But uh, it has to do with public safety and it has to do with public security. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Minions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, maybe Councillor Solve could just clarify because I'm not completely clear on what you're looking for from staff. Um, like, I don't know if you have some ideas on how we would potentially regulate drone use. Um, if you could clarify, I could maybe get a better idea of what we're looking for. Yeah, how are we going to regulate this? Like I said, I would like staff to come back and having actual bylaw for use of these drones to be used, number one, on special events, and number two, in parks area. As simple as that. And how we regulate that, it's already being regulated through the RCMP receiving many complaints of night drones being used on the neighbors and so forth. And it would just alleviate that. At least we would have a bylaw to uh, enforce that. Okay, Councillor McClemon. Yeah, just a question to our CAO. Do we have the, the authority, uh, the power at our level of government to control the drones, or is this a federal show? Mr. Mayor, that's, that's beyond my, my scope. Uh, I would ask that you refer that question to the city planner, who's ready to answer. City planner, um, how did you know what I was going to ask? Oh, well, sometimes I get lucky. Um, just, just for council's information, trans because this is an issue across the country, Transport Canada will be implementing new regulations early in 2017, and it's going to cover, uh, you know, the size of drones. Uh, it's going to get into age categories. In other words, it's going to say, and this is for recreational drone flyers. There's already rules and regulations for the commercial ones, but this will include, you know, your the the ones that the, the kids get. So they're going to be talking about regulating age. What, what age is going to be allowed to operate a drone, and there'll be categories coming up. So from a staff point of view, I'd be waiting for this information to come forward regardless. Um, but I'm thinking what they uh, put in place is, is going to give not only communities like ours, but uh, that whole industry uh, guidance across the country. Councillor Sobe? Yeah, I'm trying to use the example of dispensaries. We could always wait for that also. My concern is, is having drones being operated within the city limits at nighttime. And uh, I don't think the Aeronautic Act is going to be dealing with that issue. It's uh, just a municipal issue. So since we are uh, early in 2017, it sounds like it's not going to be very much longer before we get to see the, the federal perspective on this. Am I, am I right? Well, that's my understanding, but I, you know, I can't tell you. But that, that was their commitment to Transport Canada, was say they were going to be implementing new rules in 2017. Sounds like we should await their, their ruling. Well, it's, it's, it's Council's direction, I mean, about what you, you want to do. Um, but they have a lot more expertise than we do. Mm. Uh, Councillor Paulson? I would just suggest that we uh, leave it on in the same priority and pending um, the outcome of the federal regulations and then we can review where we stand as a municipality against it. Yeah, I would tend to agree with that. Councillor McClemon? 
Yeah, um, I guess one place we can control things is in our parks that we own and can say what can happen. I, I would be uh, hesitant to say drones in parks. There's a lot of little kids around and uh, so somebody running one of these things that runs out of whatever it runs out of up there and comes on down when it ain't supposed to. So I, I, I got a bit of a problem with them going there. I, I'm not sure they should be anywhere but out in the country, but that's just me. But uh, I don't think we can, I, I agree with you, we should wait and see what they do and, mm -hmm. and go with that. So you're, you agree with leaving it as a low priority until we find out what comes forward? No, yeah, we now know something's happening. Yeah. And now that we know that, then let's see what it is. Okay, anything else on this? All right, let's, uh, let's move on. Mr. Mayor, number 31. Um, it deals with the calls for a report on recommendations for amendments to the city property maintenance bylaw to address vacant property concerns. Our previous city engineer had done some good work on this topic and uh, we are currently without an engineer. I would suggest that this, this item remain on the status report for action as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Mayor, there are six remaining items from the Rogers Review from 20, 2015, actually, that were um, enacted by Council in 2016. I would suggest that um, Council um, retain all six of these. And if, if you like, we'll, um, we'll keep them and we'll when we reorganize the status report document, we'll assign those where they should be assigned. Some of the things have changed as far as our, our management team, and I would assign some of these elsewhere. Okay, I'd certainly be willing to accept your recommendation on that. Um, questions? Uh, no, we've already done 32. 32 we dealt with in December. Okay, uh, Councillor McClellan, are you prepared to uh, move receipt of this report? Yeah, um, just before I do, did you want a further motion on the one we split, or are you going to come back with that? Mr. Mayor, you, you had a motion to split it, so we'll split it into two separate actions and we'll, we'll assign them where they're required to go. Okay. We're, we're good to go. So then I would move we receive the CAO's report on the status report. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. <coughs> and then uh, manager's monthly reports uh, from the planning department. Uh, The month isn't quite over yet. <laughs> and it, December was a very short month, so this is a short report. Yes, um, although I would like to point out that you can see through <coughs> the year, uh, single family home construction was up significantly uh, for us. And uh, because council have asked about it previously, I did want to let you know that the co-op gas station on 10th Avenue uh, came and picked up their building permit today. Uh, in discussions with them, they would hope to start construction probably in early March. That's great. Okay. And I see uh, double the number of subdivisions from the previous year? Subdivision applications, yeah. And Some of them are carrying over into this year. Okay. So that means presumably more houses for more families. Let's, yes, that would be, a, I would hope so. so. I would hope so, <laughs> which means more people helping to pay taxes, which is great. <laughs> Councillor McClemon. Yeah, just um, a question. I, I notice on your uh, report here that in 2015 and 2016 there was no um, applications or whatever for what we call the sign bylaw. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I've been told that the reason the Bulldogs don't have their sign up on stamp is because of a sign bylaw. What do we have to do to make it possible? Um, because so it's, it's getting me, you know, I, I don't even know there's a game on it. Couldn't afford the tickets this year, so I'm waiting just till I see it on the clapboard and it's not there. So two points on that one. I have recently met with Lucas Banton um, and we uh, are coming to agreement and I'll be putting in writing it to them in order to allow uh, game day signs uh, to go up in uh, a few different locations within the city. And the sign bylaw thing that you see here are not applications for signs, they're 
where somebody is applying to amend the signed bylaw. In other words, so in, in my way of thinking, if someone isn't, a, because we've had zero applications to amend the signed bylaw, that means the signed bylaw is actually working for the vast majority mm -hmm of commercial development and, and that sort of stuff because we're not having any applications to try and amend it. But on the Bulldogs one, we've come to an agreement and I'll be issuing a, a permit to allow their game day signs to, to go up. That's good, they've been a whole year and they've probably lost a lot of customers, they're a fair percentage uh, by not having it up. <laughs> and, and while you're at that, if McLean Mill puts a sign up there for selling lumber, you can leave it standing too, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you have a pet project or anything. I put them up and don't care anyone taking Okay, um, any other questions, Council? Councillor Alamani, do you want to move receipt of that report? I'll move receipt of the Planning Commission report, or Department's report. Don't go anywhere. Uh, I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> All in favor? Carry. Thank you. And uh, from the City Planner, uh, we're on to bylaws now. Um, we have the official community plan and zoning bylaw amendments, uh, Russell Street, Rainbow Gardens, and we have a report dated January the 3rd, 2017 from City Planner advising that the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure approves the bylaws 4926 and 4927. And uh, Councillor Minions, do you want to move, uh, move those, that bylaw? That official community plan amendment number 23, 5350 Russell Street, Rainbow Gardens, bylaw number 4926, be now finally adopted, signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the corporate seal, and numbered 4926. Seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion, Council? All in favor? Carried. That zoning amendment number 19, 5350 Russell Street, Rainbow Gardens, bylaw number 4927, be now finally adopted, signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the corporate seal, and numbered 4927. Seconder? Second. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, and which then brings us to uh, correspondence for action, uh, Council. Um, First item is from uh, Roland Smith. We have a letter dated January the 3rd, 2017, regarding our decision to operate a restaurant at McLean Mill. Um, uh, Councillor Washington, do you want to uh, move that so we can discuss the letter? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the letter dated January 3, 2017, regarding the decision to operate a restaurant at McLean Mill be received and referred to the Chief Administrative Office, Officer for response. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. Any uh, discussion, Council? Councillor Sobe? Uh, I just want to make sure that the uh, public will have access to this letter. Okay, thank you. It's, it's in the agenda. Councillor uh, McClement? Yeah, I, I um, have noted the letter and I, and I will leave it to the Chief Administrator to response, but I, I'm not sure that we've made any decision to put a restaurant anywhere, but uh, that's okay. Uh, he can be responded to. Okay, thank you. Councillor Alamani? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On some of the uh, questions uh, Mr. Smith brought up around the railway, um, I, uh, I responded to him uh, and just let him know that I, I would uh, bring those up with the Island Corridor Foundation. I have a meeting with them uh, in February as part of the, the uh, liaison committee, so uh, I'll do that and try to uh, get some more information back for Council. Okay, thank you. Councillor Minions? Thank you, um, and I did ask today as well, and I know that the new society has a meeting with somebody from Island Corridor Foundation to get some more information, so I think that concern is at least starting to be addressed. Okay, thank you. On the motion then, Council, all those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And uh, CAO, did you wish to make a comment on number two? Mr. Mayor, number two is a letter from the Western Vancouver Island uh, Industrial Heritage Society. They've asked that this item be withdrawn from this agenda um, in order that they can reconsider and, and possibly come back with it later or not. So they've asked that it be withdrawn. Okay. Thank you. Do you have to move that up the agenda? Uh, I don't believe so, but City Clerk would advise me if I'm wrong. I'll just make a note in the minutes, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. And uh, there are no proclamations, so that brings us into uh, informational correspondence. Uh, City Clerk. 
A few items, Mr. Mayor. An email from the Canadian Home Builders Association, Vancouver Island, inviting the Mayor and Council to attend the January Building Industry Outlook Forum on January 12th in Nanaimo. Minister of Fisheries and Oceans responds to the Mayor's correspondence of September 16th, acknowledging the work of West Coast Aquatic and the Barclay Salmon Roundtable. Letter from the UBCM advising that the Asset Management Maturity Assessment and Roadmap Development Project has received funding of $10,000 through the 2017 Asset Management Planning Grant Program. The District of Kitimat has provided a copy of their press release, uh, which is an open letter to Canada stating Canadians must seize opportunities to add value to our natural resources before exporting to foreign markets. <coughs> Councillor Alamani has provided notes from the October board meeting of the Island Corridor Foundation. Uh, Council has received September, October and November meeting minutes from the Alberni Valley Museum and Heritage Commission. Two uh, items of correspondence related to the five-year financial plan. Uh, input has been received from the Civic Affairs Committee of the Alberni Valley Chamber of Commerce, providing comments for consideration during development of the five-year financial plan, and also an email from Gail Horvath expressing concern regarding policing and costs. The Ministry of Community Sport and Cultural Development advises of a, rural, a review of rural education practices and rural education funding and requesting feedback by participating in an online discussion forum. And this is open until January 31st. The RCMP provides expenditures to November 30th, 2016. Alberni Valley Community Stakeholders Initiative to End Homelessness has provided a copy of their December minutes as well as their project coordinators monthly report. And Golder Associates Limited has provided their evaluation of operations and emissions from Can Timber Biotech Inc. And there is a link to um, the complete re report, which is available online. Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, Council, there's a few things that I want to take note of, uh, and I'm sure there will be others. Um, the uh, Union of BC uh, Municipalities the $10,000 uh, is good that we've received the money. This is definitely a strategic initiative for the city. Um, and from the Ministry of Community, Sport and Cultural Development, uh, advising us of the opportunity for the rural education practices input, uh, it is an opportunity for the entire community, not just for council, but I bring it to your, uh, your attention. And uh, in my opinion, from the Can Timber Biotech, uh, we, we really need a timeline for, uh, for staff to respond to. Uh, we need to know how this thing is supposed to be unfolding. So we still need to get that, that information. Uh, any other comments, Council? Um, Councillor Silvey, do you want to move receipt of the correspondence? Yeah, that the informational uh, correspondence item from 1 through 11 be received and filed. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, there is no report from in camera. And which then brings us to council reports. And the first one is mine. Uh, I'll go through a few things. Uh, Last Saturday, January the 7th, I attended the uh, Totem Tournament at ADSS, and uh, as usual, it was a, a great final game for ADSS. Uh, they didn't win the tournament, but they won that game, and I'm happy to report that I took our Syrian family to the, see the game. It was their first basketball game in Port Alberni, and now the nine-year-old wants to play basketball. Uh, January the 1st, I attended the Polar Bear Swim, and... Thank you, Councillor Alamani, for getting cold for the rest of us. Uh, and the night before, on December 31st, first night, uh, I went to the multiplex, the pool, and the uh, Glenwood. Um, and thank you to the Toy Run and Boston Pizza for sponsoring those major events for our community, and they were well attended. Yeah, yeah. And as well, thank you to Shars for uh, sponsoring a board game night, which I also went to, so that was great. Didn't have a lot of time, but it's good. Uh, I also want to say thank you to city staff for monitoring and responding to our snow events. Uh, our staff has been really amazing about being out there 
in times way beyond when you would normally expect them to and trying to keep things safe for all of us. Um, in December 19th, I attended the Fresh Start Ceremony at the Bread of Life, uh, which was uh, the funding for that is sponsored by Lions. And as well on December 14th, uh, we had some representatives from North Island College and we had a demonstration of how the new ice blast uh, technique uh, may be of some assistance to cities. So it's a quite a fascinating, uh, fascinating development uh, through the division of, of uh, the Colson group of companies. It'd be interesting to see how it can be applied to municipal purposes. <coughs> Neat thing is it's a made in city of Port Alberni technology. Um, and of course, today we had the Abishiri delegation. A council came to uh, City Hall for a bit of a tour and some gift exchange. Uh, that's my report. I move uh, acceptance of that report. Second. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And uh, anything from the regional district, uh, Councillor McClellan? No, Mr. Mayor, we've met since the last time they did. The only uh, comment I would make that the uh, Transportation Committee of the regional D ACRD Regional District uh, is going to meet with somebody from the Ministry of Transportation this Wednesday to try and explain to us uh, their, their solution to our highway problems. We invited the minister, but uh, he seems to be quite busy. Okay, thank you. Um, do we move acceptance of your report? Oh. Sure, it wasn't much report, but yeah, we'll move that except. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Carried. And from Council, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, January 4th had our first heritage meeting of the year. Um, priorities for 2017, we're going to move forward as planned. Um, from the Industrial Heritage Society, there were some concerns with the new board coming on and quite a lengthy discussion about that. Um, they had their Santa train, five trips on Saturday, four on Sunday, um, and it was very well attended. The Community Arts Council is looking for gently used books, CDs, and DVDs uh, for a book sale coming up at the Roland Arts Centre. Um, today, this morning, we had an arts, culture, and heritage uh, meeting. Um, they're, having, they're planning their big uh, trade show on <clears throat> January 21st at Echo Centre from 1 till 4. Uh, they want, they're looking for your input. Uh, they want you to provide your input of the, on the development of the strategic plan for arts, culture, and heritage in the Alberni Valley, and they need to hear what you think. So uh, from one to four there, um, <coughs> there'll be uh, trade show booths. Uh, Rotary's going to be there, Port Al Players, and, of course, the First Nations. Uh, there'll be a town hall meeting in the Cedar Room. Uh, they're look, they've got a graffiti wall. And hopefully some of the councillors will be there uh, so that some of the other people can talk to them one-on-one -on -one rather than writing their names on, on graffiti walls or, or doing a live broadcast. Uh, they will record you and you can uh, give your, uh, your shot to there. And just finally, our, our film fest again is starting. Uh, first one is January 29th and continues through till the end of March. And Mr. Mayor, that's my report. Thank you. Councillor Allen, any? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it, obviously short because of the Christmas break. I hope everybody had a wonderful break. Um, I was down at the polar bear swim, as you said, uh, freezing to death, but uh, with many of my closest friends, so it was all good. Um, did have a Food Security Climate Disruption Committee meeting uh, on Thursday last. Uh, we're working on the annual report, and we uh, welcomed a, a new member, uh, Brendan Chase, so I want to thank him for, uh, for stepping up for that committee. Uh, but other than that, I have to uh, say happy birthday to my wife because it is her birthday today and I promised that I would not say happy birthday to her, so I did. <laughs> 29. Yeah, it, 29. Forever. Perfect. Absolutely. And you're Thank not you. Going home, right? <laughs> 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 Councillor Minas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, most of my committees have not gotten started up after the holidays yet, but uh, we did have a Civic Affairs Committee meeting. Um, before Christmas, um, where we started some really good discussion around the budget um, and looking forward to having the Chamber very involved in our upcoming budget meetings. Thanks. Thank you. And Councillor Paulson? Well, everybody, welcome to Canada's longest birthday party. It's just started January 1st and goes to the end of the year. It's the Canada 150 celebrations. Um, 
The community is still planning um, uh, their events around Canada 150. Uh, if any groups um, are watching or, or um, are interested in getting involved, in particular um, down in the waterfront areas, um, please contact myself or Teresa Kingston. Could be jugglers, bands, it could be anything. Anybody who wants to party. And um, those meetings will um, continue and the planning proce process will continue uh, early in the new year. Um, I have uh, garnered a couple of um, large sponsors and I need a couple more for the fireworks performance for that night. But um, we're getting there and I have a company that's going to come in and do that for us. So uh, lots of planning and lots of fun to go. So Canada 150. That's great. Thank you. Councillor Sobe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> well, it was very busy for me uh, since I was proclaimed as Santa's helper all around town and in the valley. So I was very busy seven days a week. Uh, starting with the, at, uh, the 14th of December, I attended the uh, volunteer lunch in the ADSS for the bref breakfast club, which I'm a part of. Uh, there's a big need of volunteers, uh, not just ADSS, but any other schools. So if anybody out there has any interest spending a few hours in the morning to help out, please get a hold of your uh, local school and see how you could participate. Um, on the 18th, uh, December, Maritime Discovery Center, uh, we had the Santa Claus visit there, and uh, the whole town got to enjoy uh, lots of rain, but... It was inside and it was uh, well attended. So thank you for the staff for uh, putting that up. Uh, on the 19th, I attended the Bread of Life for the ribbon cutting for their new red of, uh, renovations. And uh, that event was uh, well attended. Uh, I was with the, uh, Mr. Mayor was also in attendance. Um, on the 7th of January, uh, I had the privilege to once again, this year, meet the uh, obituary delegation who arrived. Uh, it's approximately 10 students and two adults. These students will be uh, going around the community, uh, visiting uh, special places, and also attending the schools just to have some culture exchange and so forth. Uh, on the 8th, uh, this was a special mention. Uh, I attended with uh, some residents of Fur Park and Echo Village, and uh, I attended... It's been a very long time at the Ca uh, Capitol Theater, and they have a musical uh, going on there with decades and with the history of Port Alberni. Uh, I, I must admit, and I put it on my blog on Facebook, that I was totally blown away with the local talent that we have, and uh, I was just amazed. So this weekend will be, this Friday and Saturday will be their last performance for that musical, so uh, please, it's uh, worth attending and uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, on the evening of the 8th, I uh, had the potluck for the uh, abishery, and uh, so we get to integrate all the uh, parents that sponsored the children and so forth together. And again, if anybody in the future is interested, number one, being part of the delegation that will be going in Japan this summer, uh, please just get a hold of me and I'll get you to the right people. Uh, and today we had our city hall tour with the, the mayor and myself uh, for the adult uh, uh, delegation. And uh, they enjoyed the functions, uh, learning the functions of Port Alberni and how the city works. And there was a few gifts exchanged. And tomorrow night is going to be the Serenara night. Serenara. Well, I need to go to Japan to learn that one better. Um, so uh, I'll be attending that also. And uh, that's uh, my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor McClellan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've had a, a nice, quiet Christmas, I think. Uh, the, just before Christmas, the last thing I did was study up on this canned timber report and uh, went right through the whole thing and pretended I understood a whole lot of it that probably I didn't. But I, I was kind of pleased with at least uh, there is some recommendations there. and. It, to me, there was only a couple of flags that came up that uh, one should be worried about. But I, I, I did get kind of concerned that when the clearest day we had here in Port Alberni, uh, there was uh, an air quality warning flashed up, and I, I got, like it was the first day, I, I didn't have any trouble, didn't smell any smoke, I didn't have any trouble breathing or anything, so I thought, this is kind of weird. 
So I, I started tracking it down and got a hold of the fellow that, that uh, set it up, and he did apologize, saying, oh, well, it kind of might look like a mic got bad, so we put the thing up. But it, to me, it's just another thing that gives Port Alberni a bad name because it was reported on CBC for a long time, all, all one day particularly, the day after, actually. And, uh, I, you know, I asked them to... Please don't do that. It's like Money Magazine. We, we don't need any more problems in, in that, that area. And um, so, yeah, and uh, New Year's Day, I did not go to the uh, polar bear swim. I thought if you guys wanted to get cold there, do that. I got cold somewhere else. I was actually out at the uh, Black Powder Range, uh, a shotgun shoot, a fun one. And when I got really cold, I could go inside a very hot uh, and warm warming shed. So I was a bit of a chicken, I think. But uh, anyway, I'm glad it was a success. And just, um, I, I do have a question. I'd, I'd like our CAO to just sort of let us know how we're doing uh, with our quality, quantity of salt for our roads. And we had a real bad morning today, and there's no way the crews could have kept up to it. But uh, maybe we could just see how we're doing and so everybody knows. And that concludes my report. I want to move acceptance of council reports? I move the, all those wonderful reports that everybody else made and move we accept them. And I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. And uh, under new business, uh, the first is a, is a draft call for proposal. And uh, Councillor McClemon, mm. do you want to uh, move that? Um, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a, a motion to revive uh, a proposal we had out, and I'll make the motion in a second. I'll explain why I put the notice motion. The Council of the City of Port Alberni directs staff to bring forward a draft call for proposals for the development of approximately eight hectares of vacant land adjacent to the West Portie Place. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. Uh, any comment, Council? Uh, yeah, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is something that we put up, and it was sort of as a... Uh, an answer to some of the problems that the West Porty residents had with the uh, park that uh, is going to be partially used for the uh, Rainbow Gardens. And during the last public meeting, they kind of reminded us we promised this and, and we took it off. So if I would like to see it go back on. And if nobody wants it, because that was our concern that we had too many lots out there, then nobody will bid on it. And then we know that that's what the problem is and that's why it didn't go through but I really don't think we should have taken it off that was my opinion then and uh, I think we should let the market decide that's just my opinion and you guys can vote how you like uh, Councillor McClemon um, I'll let Councillor Minions ask the question <clears throat> thank you I was just gonna say that um, I agree it would be nice to um, put this back on and just see if there's interest from um, if there's interest from developers in this land or not. Um, one thing that we had originally discussed when we talked about this proposal or putting the RFP out was making sure we make it clear that um, a developer doesn't necessarily need to buy the whole thing or plan to develop the whole thing. It could be a smaller chunk. So if we are going to put this back on the market to see if there's interest from developers, I think we should be clear um, that we're not expecting somebody to come and buy 20 acres and develop 20 acres of houses because that's quite a large undertaking. So, thank you. That's what we said before. And the other thing we had on before was uh, a park that would be in, in that part as well. I, I think um, eight hectares is, is a lot. That's 40% of that property there. I think we should be looking at uh, probably a quarter of that. Yeah, I um, didn't put an amount down. I think that's what we had last time. And so it would be five acres or mm -hmm. two hectares instead of 20 acres. Well, when they come back with the RFP, we can decide that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Alamani? Uh, I have no comments. Okay, sorry, I thought I saw your hand up. Um, it's been moved and seconded, right? City clerk, okay. All those in favor? Carried. And Councillor Alamani? Yeah, just, just a notice of motion for, uh, for the next meeting. Uh, Council for the City of Port Alberni in the spirit of reconciliation, work with the Hoopachesset and Seashot First Nation Councils, the community and any affected property owners to potentially rename Neal Street. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, it doesn't require a seconder because it's just a notice of motion. Did, did you intentionally leave off the name Indian? I did. And uh, this is, then brings us to question period. It's an opportunity for public and press to ask questions of mayor and council. Mr. Anderson, nice to see you. Neil Anderson, Carmichael Street. There. Change my place. <laughs> uh, uh, Happy New Year's to start with. Uh, just uh, some information. On, on number two of the correspondence for action from Roland Smith, and I'm sorry if I'm not up to date. Uh, I haven't been uh, keeping in touch with the events for, the, uh, for a while. Uh, it, can you read the letter that was sent? Because I'm not, I'm not aware of what uh, Mr. Rowland's concern was, and uh, I think maybe other members of the public are not aware as well. You Rather mentioned that it was, I, I believe, that it was in the, the, the council's agenda, but that doesn't clarify anything. It, it, is, it is in the package for this, for this meeting, um, so certainly it's available online, and, and it, it's a fairly long... Uh, three-page letter, so it would take quite a while to read it, but um, basically he's wanting clarification on how we arrived at our decision around McLean's Mill. Uh, and just so you know, I, I do actually have an upcoming meeting with Mr. Smith to review some of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll be able to address it one-on-one -on -one -on -one with him, and uh, CAO is going to be responding to his letter. But, but it is available online. Mm -hmm. um, Councillor Minions? I just wanted to ask if um, the CAO's response will be in an agenda in the future as well. Oh uh, yes, it would. Okay, a uh, second one, and I'm. <laughs> it was brought up earlier on, and I have a friend that's been hounding me every morning when I go for coffee with him about the clock tower. He won't come here and talk about it, but he. And it's been on the, the agenda of this city for as long as I can remember yeah. being here. What is what is happening? Uh, my concern is that we're going to end up tearing it down. Just a feeling I got, and I think that would be a huge mistake for the reasons that we've brought up earlier on today. So what is the plan? Are we just going to put it on off another year and another year? What, what, are, what are the plans that the council has in mind? Well, I don't think we have a specific plan at this point. It, uh, there is every person sitting around this council table shares your concern and shares the concern of the majority of people in the community that that is a, an asset that we need to re retain. Uh, we did put in an application to the Canada 150 for up to $250,000 to to assess and repair that, that clock tower, and we weren't successful with that application. So um, we will have to continue to look for funds to do that because it's not an inexpensive uh, proposition to repair it. It is, uh, but it is a community asset, and, and yes. we feel deeply as a council that we need to do something to do that as well as uh, other maintenance issues related to uh, Harbor Key. Um, one of the maintenance items that we're looking at this year is to repair the uh, the steel, what's it called? The sheet piling. The sheet That's piling, right. yeah. It's, uh, there's, there's some significant erosion there on one particular corner that we have to address and that's uh, uh, it's not as expensive as we'd first thought but it is a really significant issue. It's not uh, as prominent as the clock tower, but it is no less important. And that $250,000, if my memory serves me correct, was uh, came from an estimate given by, I believe, uh, Alberni Engineering on what they thought it would cost to either take it down and or repair it. it yeah. Is that the only estimate that, that we have had? Uh, I'm not sure, CAO? Mr. Mayor, in 2016, we undertook um, some engineering work on that on the clock tower just to just to look into the the structure of it and see what it actually needed. I haven't seen that report yet, but I expect council will be considering a capital project in 2017, uh, a refurbishment project, if if it is um, salvageable. If not, we'll have to consider demolition. But I haven't seen that report, and but my understanding is that it was um, it was not that bad the tower. Yeah. Okay, so we hope to have a report for you on. Okay, and A.W. Neal, I just have to make a comment. I thank the previous speaker at the beginning of the meeting for, for coming up and addressing this. 
uh, because I agree totally to what he's saying. If we reflect back into 1943, et cetera, and it, I guess it's a question and a response that, that maybe uh, Councillor Alamani may want to respond to it. If we were going to withdraw names, et cetera, and this was touched before, I just want to reemphasize it, for everyone that discriminated, that violated people's human rights, women's rights issues, it goes on and on and on. There's a hell of a lot of names that are going to be changed, and that includes people today. And our way of thinking and our way of addressing issues today are totally different back there. We should be all ashamed of what we did in the past, and we're all partly responsible, not any one person. So I'm not in favor of making changes, although I do understand the reasoning behind it. But you have to look at the difference between how we thought back in those years and how we think today. I'm just re-emphasizing what was said by the gentleman back there. Uh, one last question, it's on Rainbow Gardens and the development of the park. Did the residents of Rainbow Gardens, because it went on and on for a while and there was uh, several meetings, did they finally agree to the development of that uh, <coughs> other area to create the housing development and the and a park uh, area. Are they for it or against it? Which one are we talking about? The Rainbow Gardens or the one, the RFP that we're just putting Yeah, the in? RFP. Yeah. Um, well, there wasn't something that we put up to the community to say, are you in favor of it or are you not in favor of it at this point? Um, but it is certainly uh, a topic that we have discussed openly. Uh, and as I said, it, 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 and as the city planner said, it was, uh, previously brought before council at council's request, and then we withdrew it and, and put it on hold until, and now we've just uh, reactivated that. Because my understanding was from a couple of meetings I went to that the majority of people who attended that meetings were against any development there. And so I'm just curious why we're still going ahead with it, considering the problems that were brought up regarding drainage, et cetera. I'm just bringing this forward. To yeah, this okay. I, I wonder why we, are going ahead with it, considering from what I understood the the owner or the residents were not in favor of it, yeah, and I don't know whether that's necessarily the case, but uh, I'm sure we'll hear if there is a yeah. problem. okay, thank you. okay, thank you, Mr. Anderson. All right, and council that uh, uh, brings us to adjournment is there any more uh, uh, yes, do you have a question? Sorry, I didn't see your hand up. My name is Gail Horvath. I live at uh, Old Sprout Lake. Um, I had something included in your package regarding the RCMP budget. Right. And I'm just really surprised you got through your whole agenda in half hour. That's why <laughs> I didn't expect that. But um, anyways, I was wondering if there was any discussion this evening on um, the RCMP budget whether you guys actually see any stats from the Port Alberni RCMP as to the number of murders, the violent crimes, the thefts. Do you guys see those stats every year? We, we get the, st the stats, yes. Okay. Uh, m more, other, more, than, more than just once a year. Okay, yeah, other regions or other areas um, provide those things quarterly and they're available online quarterly. Right. Port Alberni has nothing that I've been able to find online so is that available to the public? There's yeah. nothing the, the showing like the, you know, the, um, actually I've got stuff here in regards to other areas. So for Surrey, it lists the number of uh, violent crimes, homicides, attempted murders, robbery. I mean, it's a two page list. You have that? We it's do have that information available, yes. Okay, that's it, not in our package? Uh, it is on our agenda when it's been reported to us by the, by the uh, inspector. And uh, as well, I'm, I'm not sure whether they're on, they're on the city website or not, but they, it is available in the, in the uh, council meeting and the package for council. Okay, yeah, I just couldn't find anything regarding that. And, um, you know, just in regards to our policing, we have a very, very high budget uh, for our RCMP. Mm -hmm. There's a real lack of response. You know, I'm not sure if there was any discussion 
as to, again, what was provided in your, your packages as to the lack of response, the lack of concern with the crime going on. You know, they, they consider things to be civil matters that are really policing matters. You know, how many officers are actually on the street or how many are on disability because they're too obese to work, you know. Are, are those officers all being paid um, still their full salary? Are we still paying for 34 officers when half of them are not on the street patrolling? You know, there's a lot of questions I would like ha you to look at, and I listed some of those questions in your package. You know, so it would uh, be nice to, um, if you're not going to review them this evening, then maybe if I could get a response to those questions. Yeah, I actually, um, I will be meeting with, uh, with Inspector uh, Hunter, and we'll see if we can get some information for you in, in answer to some of your questions. Um, the, uh, there's far more than 50% than of, the, of the members are, are on, it's, you know, you said, Half of them aren't, aren't able to work. But, you know, I, I recognize your point that uh, part of the reason why there is a, a $600,000 surplus in the RCMP budget, and you can see this in the, in the agenda, um, is because when the RCMP officers go off, it's not always, they're not replaced. And so, therefore, their, the cost, their cost is borne through Ottawa rather than by us. And that, so okay, so that, that creates a, um, a problem in terms of policing, but it's perhaps an opportunity as well. So it's definitely something that we need to address. Yeah, and you know, just to follow up on that, so I don't believe that more police officers is beneficial for us. I mean, we far exceed the number of police officers that a town this size or a city this size should have, really. Um, and so, looking at alternatives you know again i've listed uh, different things different um, alternatives you could look at and i've put it out to some of the members in the community you know it's only been a week so i haven't had much of a response back but again i mean i have no time for this this is not my job but it's certainly needed to look forward uh, mm. to a, a preventative measure not to a, more rcmp members who turn their eye or turn their back or don't respond mm -hmm. because it's pretty poor policing right now. That's it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for your input and we'll see if we can get you some responses. <coughs> okay. Um, motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.